Oh, that thing is really <laughs> annoying. That is so yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> Just before we hit record, you were telling me a story about Emily this morning when you told her you oh, were making yeah, a Ricky dude. video. Do you want to share it with the guys? Yeah. yeah, she's like, what are you doing today? I'm like, oh, I'm making a video with Scott. And she's like, oh, what about it? And I'm like, Rickenbacker. And she's like, are you going to tell him your storied history of how many Ricks you've bought and sold and why you don't like to play <gasps> them? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, are you going to tell him like how they were too pokey for you? What do you mean pokey? The edges and stuff. Yeah, and I know on yours and, and on mine, actually, we don't have binding. What do you have right now? You have a 4003, right? This New? is a 4003, and this is the first time we've ever had a Rickenbacker on the channel ever, which is super cool that yeah, now we've got two. So cool. We're going at it with two Rickenbackers, and we're actually giving one of these away. We're giving one of these bases away. You're going to have to stick around and see which one it is. We'll tell you about it in a few minutes. But this one is a 4003, and to your point, yeah, it's not like the old school ones where it's got the binding around the yep. outside. So have you had one of those? With the I have. I've had a bunch of Rickenbackers. It took me a while to find one that I like. You know, the ones with binding look really cool, like the vintage 4001s that have binding around them. But, oh, man, I found that when I'd play them for a little bit, I just would be like, ah, it was never comfortable for me to play. Honestly, in terms of just design-wise for me, maybe one of the coolest ever instruments. Not just basses. Like, it's freaking awesome like i just yeah, love like you just want to keep it in the shot and look at it right yeah you just want to like it's, it's oh. like the shape it's it's this sort of like crossover of multiple things right it's the shape it's yes. the chrome it's the, yes do you know what i mean it's just sort of like it's just the vibe isn't it it's the neck through do you know that ricks were the first neck through bass ever no yeah are you serious yeah like people watching won't know this but i i basically know nothing about rickenbackers for the most part you know that I do know that because I went and did a little bit of research because what we thought would be a cool idea is obviously to dig into the Rickenbacker. Yes, it has annoying features, which we'll be talking about today, <laughs> but it's also the base behind the Beatles. Yes. It's the base behind Rush. Yes. It's the base behind Yes. Yes. It's the base behind the most iconic Metallica era ever with Cliff Burton, right? It's a really, really important base. Adolf Rickenbacker, I think he was from Switzerland, I think created the first electric guitar ever no in the 1930s called the frying pan and it literally looked like a freaking frying pan right <laughs> so that was in the 1930s and then launched the bass the first rickenbacker bass in 1957 but it didn't have a neck pickup it was like just the same. Yeah, the design was pretty much the same, but it only had the horseshoe pickup. And the horseshoe pickup was actually taken, the idea, the exact same concept was taken from the frying pan guitar built in in the 30s so this is a this is a reissue base this was their first reissue that they did i believe in the 80s this is a 93 it's called a 4001 v63 i don't think that this is magnetized on the reissues on the reissues, i think it. that it's aesthetic and i even think that then on your base scott that cover i don't even think it's metal i think this is yeah, chrome plated it's, it's, plastic yeah i think it's chrome plated plastic yeah what are these things okay so these raise up a bit of sponge is that how you say it's got a bit of sponge a bit of sponge mate do you see the sponge underneath there do you oh, see oh is that so you can get the the uh, get it to mute play up high on that play up high on the g yeah 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 right that's a vibe but how cool is that, right? That it's like built into the bridge. Yeah. You can just raise it or lower it with the screws. Okay, so I got so excited about that feature. Problem for me with this kind of thing is that it takes a while to do. So it's not like, you know, on your wedding gig, if you if you want to play my girl, you're going to be like, <laughs> right? Also, when you do this, if you looked at it on a tuner, Scott, it raises the pitch. And then the higher you go to the sharper the bass gets. Yeah, and so yeah. I never use mine, but I like it in principle. I like that it's in there. I love the aesthetic of the bridge, but the thing that sucks, that's super annoying <laughs> about the bridge is that you can't palm mute on it. You cannot rest your palm and get a muted note with your thumb. You also cannot palm mute with a pick. It's just, you can't do it. These cutaways here are so deep that if you put your, your, your palm on there to palm mute, it mutes, as you can see, nothing. Nothing's nothing. happening, so. Right. Yeah, it's tough. 
And what about the uh, what about the controls? Yeah, okay, let me tell you about the controls. The knobs closest to you are actually tone knobs. At least they are on mine. Do you ever do this? Like sometimes to hear the range of a tone knob, what I'll do is I'll just tap a note and then... Yeah, yeah. You really hear it, right? Or here's the bridge. And this one has a really wide tone control. So there's no tone. There it is, wide open. It's a super pokey bridge sound, isn't it? It really is, yes. It's really pokey and and so cool, like very uh, unique. Like it has such a cool sound, that bridge pickup. Then if you go to the bottom set of knobs, those are volume for each pickup. And that's it, two tones, two volumes. And then this pickup selector, it's like a Les Paul type of vibe, right? Exactly, right. So if you've got, if you've got it pointed up, it's your neck pickup. You got it pointed down, it's the bridge. And I think that the secret sauce on a Rickenbacker is the neck pickup. I think the neck pickup is one of the most beautiful sounds. With fingers, there's like a glassiness to it. And then with a pick too, it totally reminds me of, it reminds me of McCartney. Oh, that right? sounds insane. Yeah, that's great. And I have round wounds on it. I'm sure you do too. And McCartney, yeah, yeah. I think, had flats on his, right? So you can put flats, but you hear that like that kind of like it's woody that there. Yeah. poke. Yeah. yeah. And that's the neck pickup, is it? Yeah. That's the neck pickup. Yeah. If you did it on the bridge, a little too right? Yeah, yeah. But the neck. And then to me too, this leans into um, another great player who played these is Peter Hook with uh, Joy yeah, Division, New yeah, Order, right? Yeah. So you've got... Oh, such a great tune. Oh, it's so good, right? How much do you think, and you guys in the comments as well, how much do you think that the Rickenbacker retailed for when it was released in 1957? How much did it retail for? Think about it. Guys, while you're thinking about it and letting us know in the comments as well, we are giving this bass away, but we're also giving away all of these basses back here as well. This Ken Smith Black Tiger Six String worth almost $10,000. This 1978 jazz bass, original year of my birth, year of our birth. This beautiful Music Man Stingray 5 with its gorgeous custom color. This Sadowski four string down here and a bunch of other basses as well. It's completely free to enter and it is on right now. So after you've watched this video and after we've discussed the retail price of the original 1957 bass, head on over, I'll put the link in the description down there. Go over to the page and make sure that you enter this giveaway. And again, you can get the chance of winning all of these awesome basses and this Rickenbacker that I, I really want to keep. Ian, what did it retail for in 1957? I love that you know this, and I, I am excited <laughs> to know it now too. I am going to guess 285. That's my Holy guess. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> so close. Really? So close. You really? couldn't okay. have got any closer if you had like not nailed the price. $279. <laughs> 59 cents. 279 59? 279 59 cents. You went with 285. That's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> when you started to play some of your own music and you know you were working on your own thing and your own style, you had a five string high C, you wanted to go with something different, you wanted to make the switch, and you went P bass. We all know that. Yeah. But you just said something that was so interesting, saying that you thought about going with the Rickenbacker. And I would love for you to unpack that. I did think about going with the Rickenbacker. I really did want to play something that was just kind of like, just different to what everybody else was playing. Cause everybody else was playing at that time when I was, you know, coming up and in my early twenties, everybody was playing like five strings with high C's and E to C and, and that whole thing. And I just thought, I don't want to be like everybody else. I want to be individual. Uh, that said, here's the weird kind of sort of like the weird other thread that I wanted to pull on. There was an album by Paul Motion, really, really fantastic drummer, right? That I'm a massive fan of. Paul Motion had a band called the Electric Bebop Band. <laughs> On one of the albums, there was a bass player called Anders Christensen. Man, like, that album had such an influence on me. I knew it was an electric bass he was playing, and, and to hear it within the context of a real kind of like, a, a, a band that sounded like, not fusion jazz, like kind of like jazz jazz, right? And I couldn't see the bass. 
and I'm like listening to him. I'm obsessed by this tone. What He's... is that? So years after, after yes. obsessing about this tone for years, yes. right, I go to a local internet cafe. It's within like a handful of the first times I went on YouTube. And then I'm like, I wonder if there's any, any, any videos of Anders Christensen playing. I wonder if I can find what that bass was, what that tone was that I was searching for for so many years. Dude, it was a Rickenbacker. And yes, it blew it was. my <laughs> freaking mind. I was like, what? I was expecting, I was expecting like a semi hollow electric or something. Sure. I don't know what I was expecting, but this was like at the opposite end of the spectrum. I have no idea what the, what he was using in terms of like tone. I imagine it was tone all off probably. It was either, you know, both pickups on, so. Or maybe just like the neck pickup. Because it does have like a hollow body thing, right? Yeah, yes. it has like this hollow body vibe to it, yeah. For me, it was Royston um, from Space Hog. Do you remember this line? Let's see if I can play it. This thing. Dude, I was listening to this in the car with my kids two days ago. <laughs> I mean, what a line, dude. Yeah. What a line. And he so played that, I believe, on a Rickenbacker that used to belong to John Lennon. So we talk about all this tone stuff, right? But can you, like, what does it sound if you slap on these things? Does it sound white oh. or does it sound awesome? I mean, it's annoying because you've got this pickup in the way, right? But I think it actually sounds really cool. Like if I'm in the middle. Like it's sort of glassy and I find that I just have to move my hand back. So instead of popping over the pickup, I'm behind it when I pop. And then I'm a little bit farther back from the fingerboard than I would be on a jazz. I mean, you know, I think you can even get your thumb, like if you get it right under there, you can even get that double thumb thing. Oh, <laughs> it's annoying though, dude. Yeah. Oh, that thing is really <laughs> annoying. That is so yeah, it's annoying. Is it the it neck is. pickup? Yeah. It's the neck pickup, yeah. That's it, baby. <laughs> yeah, man, that's it. It's doable, isn't but it? Dude, but that pickup is dude, right in the way. Yeah, but you know, you know that thing, you get used to it. You need to get used to the thing that you have um, instead of trying to search for the thing that will only, like the, the perfect thing for you. Sometimes the most interesting thing is the thing that you struggle slightly with, right? Yeah, 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 so like, yeah. what if you became the dude that slapped the shit out of a Rickenbacker, <laughs> <Yeah>. Scott? <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting, you know? That would yeah. be really interesting. And people are like, oh, how do you slap on it? It's so annoying. It's so uncomfortable. And you're like, well, I just got used to it. Yeah. That is cooler than like building maybe the perfect base for you. Yeah. Uh, it's just a thought. It's 100%. just a thought. Couldn't agree more, man. You can grab one of these bases. You can, hopefully, I'll be sending you one of these bases, either this Ricky or one of these over here or one of the, you've got a bunch of bases over, I do in, over in your place yeah. as well that you're giving away <laughs> yeah. as part of this giveaway. And again, it's completely free to enter. So just click that link in the description below, get in this giveaway, and hopefully we'll be sending you one of these bases. If this video brought you any value or joy whatsoever, please like, subscribe. I have been Ian Martin Allison. That's Scott Devine. We'll see you in the next one. Just Chupa Chups. The logo was designed by Salvador Dali. What's a chupa chup? A chupa chup. A chupa chup lolly. A chupa chup? A chupa chup. It's a train. A chupa chup. <laughs>